Yo, what's going on guys? Horcrux here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be going over my Magicka Necromancer PvP build for the Waking Flames DLC. Now, I've worked with a bunch of content creators and avid Necromancer mains, and I think we finally nailed it, guys. I've spent millions of gold trialing out every single set combination I possibly could. So, without further ado, fellas, let's get into today's video. Welcome back guys, hopefully you enjoyed watching the clips as I enjoyed making them. I'm going to try to keep this video as short and sweet as possible. So, a huge shout out to my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing. Couldn't do it without you. I actually have a new Patreon behind. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. Thank you, thank you. I'm also doing a PvP Top 5, which will be in a card in the top right hand corner. If you guys are interested in submitting clips, do so there. And also, the music used at the beginning of the videos provided by Axtailing Pro. I will leave a link to a SoundCloud down in the description. So let's get into the bread and butter of today's build, guys. So here's the character sheet. Completely unbuffed. It looks super underwhelming. That's just the way the macro functions. Your entire burst is coming from your harmony lineup. The better you can time your harmony with your blast bones and your full combo, the better. So just completely disregard the character sheets. That's just not really how the macro functions. You need to survive and have the sustain in addition to, to get your burst off. Uh, if you're dead, you're not going to be able to get your burst off. So... Running the Astro Mundus, running Vampire Stage 3 for the Undeath Passive. This degraded to Stage 2 at the making of this video. Bewitch Sugar Skulls, and we're also running a Breton to offset the uh, the negative effects of having Vampirism Stage 3, you know, for the cost reduction and your sustain. Now, when it comes to the skills, I have spent millions of gold, guys. Honest to God, I've spent so many hours i picked so many brains uh, arcus he's a really good necromancer he backed me up on serial a couple of times nice gaming i've tried to use every source as possible to bring you guys the very best build i can and in order to get the absolute most bang for your buck guys we're running rothgar lightning staff front bar sharpen so running rothgar on the front bar it gives you the most bang for your buck. I've tried spinners. Guys, I've tried everything. This just gives you more burst than anything for now. Until Zoss decides to nerf it. So for now, Hrothgar is definitely the way to go for your offensive set piece. Now, back bar, surprise, we're running Dark Convergence. I don't even care about the Dark Convergence damage, guys. I'm just using this for the pool effect to line everyone up in the center. The great synergy between these two sets is that... Convergence pulls them together. As long as you apply any amount of damage directly afterwards, like Hrothgar using your Harmony proc, or Dawnbreaker, or what have you, Hrothgar is going to proc as well. So everyone's in a little circle. This procs everyone in that little circle. It's everyone in that little circle again, on top of Donnie, on top of Harmony, on top of your Blast Bones. It's devastating once you get the burst lined up. It takes a little bit of practice. It, it, it took me a couple days, but I finally figured it out. Third set we're running is Balrogs. This is for a burst as well. This gives us the extra spell pin and the extra spell damage on top of whatever we already have when we go to use our ult. So Balrogs, absolute must in my opinion because our damage without the harmony combo is kind of underwhelming. It's more or less a lot of poke damage until you can get your harmony 
proc back up again. So right now I'm running five light, one medium, one heavy. You guys can kind of toss and choose around however you want. I myself like having the extra spell pin. Uh, you can run more medium, I suppose, but I'm going 511 for the Andana passes. And you don't really need any more heavy than what we have now. Oh, we're super tanky as is. You know, Necro is just a phenomenally tanky class. It's, it, I love it. Running 5 M pin, 2 well fitted. Uh, I'm not going to say that's best in slot, but since we're running a restoration staff, which I'll go over in a moment, uh, this is good. I wouldn't suggest changing anything. Running tri stats on the big pieces, I, except the chest. You know, I, I don't need more tankiness, so you can just toss max magic on these bigger pieces actually if you wanted to. I just didn't want to change it. Jewelry, yes, I golded it out. This this pained me to do, but I'm a strong believer of this setup, guys. You're going to love it. You don't even need your full combo to burst people, honest to God. If you forget to apply your blast bones or your blast bones decides to run off somewhere, it doesn't even matter. You can burst kids very easily, as you guys saw in the clips, even without the blast bones portion of the burst. So we have one spell damage, one recovery, and another recovery. And then the last piece we're running is Malakai's Band and Brutality. Uh, an absolute must because most of our damage is coming from procs and stuff that's not going to crit so it's important for us to bolster our damage as much as possible because our crit's like 12 percent like we're never going to crit anyway so it doesn't matter all harmony uh, i'm not going to say you have to have all harmony but uh it really helps it it really does guys harmony is the way to go in the macro if you can play without harmony and you have a crazy blast bonus ability you know more power to you i mean i do things similar to my sorcerer and dk you know i played the class enough to where you know i can do all these cool little niche things with it but as a new player to the macro and this is just easy mode it, it really is that, that that's all there is to say guys so there's the gear setup uh, also back bar uh running defending weapon enchantment on the back bar shock enchantment on the front bar now, I'm going to go over the skill bar really quick. Now, I know you macro mains out there are going to give me shit about this front bar. Keep in mind, I do not have Sigic. I think Sigic would be best in slot for this instead of having Force Bolts. Uh, you would want Ellie Weapon instead. But I'm running Mystic Siphon on the front bar. Uh, you can run Ellie Drain in place of this. Uh, I know most macros do, but I really like Mystic Siphon because it does give you a hell of a good dot. It does shock damage, so everyone around you is going to be inflicted with minor vulnerability. Also restores magic. It's also free, and it also buffs your damage by 3%. If you can fit this on your bar, it's phenomenal. It's free to cast, and it's got a hell of a long range on it. So I love Mystic Siphon. You macro mains out there may disagree, but I love it. Blast Bones, an absolute must. You line this up with your burst combo, which I'll go over in just a moment. Running Mortal Coil on the front bar. So again, this doesn't cost anything. It just costs a corpse. Your sort of stamina also increases your healing done. We have a lot of healing over time effects on our macro. I love running this on the front bar so we don't have to be on our back bar as much for our ongoing healing. First Pulse, you can slot Ellie Weapon instead. Uh, it's total preference. Degeneration for our source of major sorcery. And then we're running Dawnbreaker. You can run the Dawnbreaker that stuns. Uh, which I am, or the uh, other Dawnbreaker, I forget what it's called, Flawless Dawnbreaker, I believe, that gives you the spell damage after using this. The reason I'm running the one that stuns is because I don't always rely on my full burst combo to kill people. You can kill people pretty consistently without it, as long as you proc Rothgar, and Dawnbreaker Smiting is what we're using to proc Roth Rothgar without using Dark Conversions. So, again, this is more of a neutral game skill. If you want to go all in on the you know damage and your harmony build, I would definitely use uh, Flawless Dawnbreaker instead. Plus, it, plus the reason Dawnbreaker, it gives us soul damage on the front bar due to the uh, fire skill passes. Back bar, Spirit Guardian, you need to run the morph that gives you the 10% damage mitigation. Since this guy's untargetable, pretty much whatever, you're 10% you're tankier. Uh, plus it heals you. Uh, I think it's more or less kind of like Cauterize. Resistant Flesh, this is a great ability as well. It does afflict you, afflict you with minor defile, uh, but uh, that really doesn't matter. Uh, you actually have passives to offset having negative effects on you anyway. So Plus it gives you spell resistance the lower you are when you cast this. Phenomenal oh shit button. Don't want to spam it. You don't want to be looking at the Zerg when you're spamming this as well because it will heal them instead of you. Just BT dubs. On the back bar we're running Rapid Regeneration. This was a suggestion by Arcus. He also told me to go Vampire. I absolutely love it. I know most of you macros out there love the sword and board. But guys, you are so tanky anyways so you have a rapid regen you have a pseudo rapid regen on your front bar and you have a spirit guardian plus your undeath passes plus all your other mitigation this healing is through the roof with the restoration staff you don't really 
need sword and board per se because once you get off your back bar and go to your front bar it's it's really hard to keep those hots up regeneration allows you to go offensive more often i'm a big fan of it i actually regrinded i actually had this build video completely done and then i tried uh rapid regen instead of the sword and board and love it. it it's just better in my opinion guys you're super tanky enough without it without sword and board you really are you can also run the fart cloud if you're vampire guys if you like that play style more power to you but if you're gonna die just die okay i don't want to float around in a fart cloud for 10 minutes if you're gonna die just die <laughs> let's run back full resources you know whatever if you like that play style that's cool you know more more powers to you again but i personally just don't like floating around in in, in a fucking fart cloud the whole time so uh, you can definitely slot it here for mobility because this build does like mobility quite a bit. Again, if you have access to the Sigic Order skill line, I would suggest taking off uh, Mystic Siphon and slotting the uh, the the Race Against Time or Channel Acceleration, you know, what, what have you. It's your flex spot right here in Mystic Siphon. So, running Boneyard on the back bar. The reason we're running Boneyard on the back bar is because we have DC on the back bar. So, the basic combo I will go over very quickly. You're going to be on your front bar, going to be completely buffed up. You're going to cast a Blast Bones. I already have it raising up, ready to go. Go to your back bar. You're going to Light Attack, which is going to proc your weapon damage proc. You're going to drop your Boneyard. Okay. You're going to walk up. You're going to Dawn Breaker. I like Dawn Breaker. You guys can use Colossus. It, it's really good flashy ultimate. But I like Dawn Breaker because uh, it's super cheap and I can get more of these off. And then you're going to Harmony. Now... There's a bug to where if you drop out of a boneyard and you try to sprint into it, you see there's no synergy here. But if you drop an out of a boneyard and you just walk into it, there is a synergy. So be really careful of that when you're going in for your burst to not sprint into your synergy. Otherwise, you will not get the harmony proc. It's really annoying, guys. And yeah, we have Peasant Colossus on our back bar. Uh, some things to note. Potions wise, I'm using Tristat potions, but if you're going to run into a Zerg, you know, all the Akbar, the shit out of a Zerg, you definitely need a movability pot uh, just so you can get in there because you can't really sprint into the middle of them. You have to kind of walk and bounce your way into there. So you definitely need some immo immobility pots to uh, to do that. But yeah, in general, I'm running uh, Tristat. You don't need any more recovery than this. Another thing to no note out to note guys if you're kind of new to the macro here in your undaunted definitely have your undaunted command max out as well because each time you activate your synergy you get a shit ton of resources back harmony actually bolsters bolsters this by an additional 60 percent so keep that in mind champion points go over the passive running focus mending because we're running kind of a lot of spell pin up it's oof, english hard i don't know what just happened there just had a brain aneurysm but uh our spell damage isn't as high as I would like it to be, so to offset uh, some of the spell damage, you know, spell damage effects your healing, I did go with focus healing uh, mending on this one because most of our, actually all of our uh, healing effects are single target, so you get 10% better heals uh, for your neutral game. We have Master at Arms, direct damage is pretty much all sources of your damage, Biting Aura is AoE, that one's pretty obvious, and then last is Ironclad to reduce damage of uh, direct damage abilities, which is pretty much everything in the game. Go into our Red Tree. Now, you can change these however you want. The one ability I want you guys to always have is Pain's Refuge or Pain's Refugee, whatever, with an accent point. point I, I don't know. But for all the negative effects you have on you, you reduce damage taken by 1%. Please have this. It's amazing. Like, if a DK hits you with the Burning Embers, that's a, that's a Burning Embers effect. That's a slow effect. That's also the Burning Stats effect. So right there, you're taking 3% less damage just from one ability. So have this on your passive somewhere. We're doing Sustained by Suffering, Fortifying Balance of Vitality, just so you have a strong neutral game. And what I mean by neutral game is, guys, that you have passives that help you all the time, not just in niche situations like Breaking Free and you get major protection for a few seconds. Like these help you all the time, anytime, okay? So that's just the way I like to play. And then if you're running expensive potions, you know, what have you, whatever, your green tree add. If you can spec into liquid efficiency, do so. Uh, the rest of the abilities in the streak really doesn't affect PvP uh, whatsoever. But yeah, guys, that does it for the build. I try to keep it a lot shorter than my normal build video. Sorry for talking quickly. But I felt it was important to get this out there. I, I love the macro. It's very fun. If you guys have any niche builds, you know, please let me know. 
If I've messed up in this build video or you have critiques or suggestions to try, please leave them down in the towel section below. I'll be more than happy to try them because I'll be streaming later on today, a 3-4 hour stream. It's going to show you guys uh, this live in action. So if you want to be a part of that, please hit the bell icon. That'd be greatly appreciated. And that's it, guys. Thank you for tuning in and take care. Peace.